And what's even more interesting and fascinating about what I do and how I do it with mm -hmm. small losses, for instance, my lowest uh, pip loss is eight pips. So I have a pip range from eight to 12. Mm -hmm. You don't have to learn to trade alone. Welcome to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, where we interview professional currency traders and industry experts who can help you improve your trading and your life. And now, your host, Hugh Kimura. Hello, traders. This is Hugh Kimura. And in this episode of the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, I was very fortunate to have the opportunity to sit down with Kim Krumpus, a professional independent forex trader right here in the Bay Area of San Francisco. I met Kim through a meetup group that I started, and she has a really interesting story about how she got into trading, the major drawdown that she had to endure, and how she came back from it. If you're a price action trader, or if you're just interested in price action trading, I think you'll find this interview very interesting. She goes into how she's able to risk as little sometimes as eight pips per trade, and she doesn't use any indicators. It's all pure price action. Before we get started, I know you've heard this before, but I have to say this. This podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not investment, trading, or financial advice of any kind. But in this episode, there might be some advice on wine. As you know, Forex or any type of trading is very risky and you could lose all of your money. Seriously. And finally, past performance does not indicate future results. All right, now on to the show. Hi, Kim. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, Hugh. Thank you for inviting me. Um... I guess the first thing I would ask most people is uh, what kind of work were you doing before you became a full-time Forex trader? Well, I'm a CPA. I still am a CPA, but I practiced as a CPA. And I also had started a, a company, a staffing firm with some other CPAs. And we ended up taking that company public. And I essentially retired from that in early 2001. So CPA, economist, business owner. Ah, I before see. I started trading. Very cool. And what attracted you to trading? Well, as a CPA, I had always been fascinated by the markets. So I originally, when I first started trading, I'm going on my 14th year of trading. When I first started trading, I looked at trading stocks and options and even commodities for a while. Mm -hmm. And then this thing called Forex started to make it rear its head and I was attracted to Forex because of the leverage at the time which you know has since changed but the mm -hmm. leverage opportunity was huge in Forex. Oh, I see and uh, <clears throat> you never wanted to go back to uh, building companies or like doing CPA stuff? Uh, not doing CPA stuff but I do love the challenge of building companies I do love like that and sometimes I still you know flirt with that idea and mm -hmm. sometimes I do consulting projects on the side for other people who are actually involved in startup ventures. Oh, I see. Very cool. <clears throat> okay, were you good at Forex trading right away, or how long did it take you to become consistently profitable? Well, interestingly enough, I was really good at it initially. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I went through, after 2008, I sort of went sideways and took a big fall. Um, mm. But that was due to... I was a carry trader, what they call a carry trader at the time. Mm -hmm. So I held on to positions overnight and not only got capital appreciation in the positions, but I also earned interest income. So I had two effectively streams of revenue. Um, it didn't take much. It was like grid trading. So you didn't really have to know technicals. Mm -hmm. But I did know a minimum of technicals. Like I, I was familiar with trend lines and pivot points and, um, you know, a daily range. But this really didn't require sitting at a computer. And the ranges were totally different back then, before 2008, before the crash, essentially. Mm -hmm. So I was good. Then I had to switch. And it was in that switching period where I actually had to teach myself and learn how to really trade price action that I had a lot of swings in my equity mm -hmm. so I see very interesting um, were you uh, focusing on like the Aussie yen pairs for the carry trade or yeah well pair? mainly the pound yen was one of the biggest ones that okay. I did I also did the peso believe it or not wow. back in the day uh -huh. because some of those exotics really paid high interest 
And so it was profitable for me to carry trade those positions, Mm -hmm. Um, like Pound New Zealand, some of those, even though the volatility on those pairs during those years, those early years, um, could be quite staggering at times. Mm -hmm. So, And on the peso too, I guess the uh, spread was huge also, right? Well, you know, the peso, because of the actual, I used to call it penny value, it's really not even a pip value. Um, It looks huge, but Mm -hmm. it's really not when you break it down into dollars versus pennies, which is what it is. So it looks huge. Oh, I see. Interesting. So it may say like 45 is the spread, but it's really only 45 cents Mm. um, versus 45 pips valued at say a dollar a pip or $10 a pip, depending on your lot size. So it looks a lot more intense than it actually really is when you do the numbers behind it. Uh Uh-huh. I never looked into that. So I guess, yeah, that makes sense though. Um, so you said kind of your biggest obstacle was learning the fun, um, the technical stuff. Um, can you be a little more specific about that and how you got past that? Yeah, you know, actually, my when I think about my biggest optical, obstacle, <laughs> optical, <laughs> obstacle, it was really over trading after a winning streak. So ah. I, I stopped being a carry trader because it was no longer lucrative to do after the crash in 2008. Mm-hmm. And I had to switch over, like I said, to teaching myself and learning a little more technical price action trading. Well, what would happen in those swings that I mentioned previously in my equity was that I would have big winning streaks and I would then go and decimate the winning streak. So say the first three weeks of May, I might be just nailing trades one after another Mm -hmm. and then what i would do is that last week get rid you know like destroy it all Mm -hmm. so i had this really common pattern that i later found out from working with some coaches um because you know something switches in your in your brain if you've gotten into any of the psychology but more specifically the neuroscience of trading that feeling of invincibility i can't make a mistake i'm red hot Um, keeps you going and in the game. And I've since learned now, I actually won't trade the next day. If I've had a big winning day, like a couple weeks ago, I had a huge day. It was on a Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I I told everyone in my group that I said, I'm taking Friday off. I don't care what Friday has in the market. I'm taking it off because I'm protecting myself from myself. Mm -hmm. So I'm completely different. But it took a lot of hard knocks and losing equity And when you lose equity, I don't know if you've heard the term psychological capital, but not only financial capital is damaged, but it's the emotional or psychological capital that's damaged when you have swings like that in your account. Mm -hmm. And the emotional capital devastation is almost worse than the financial devastation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, That's a very good point. Uh, I've seen that a lot too. Like a lot of people will go on streaks and then just give it all back. Kind of like what happens in Vegas, I guess. Yeah, exactly. uh, Yeah. But was there a point during that period where you wanted to give up or um, was it always your Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I, um, a few years back, actually, I wanted to give up. And I just thought, I can't do this. I had lost a lot of my own wealth. I lost, I was trading some money for some people, some Mm -hmm. friends, Mm -hmm. and I lost that. So that was really hard for me to handle. Um, I I really struggled with the fact, do I really want to do this? I, it's unlike anything I've ever done before, everything else I've done in my life, I've been fortunately and you know, very, I guess, blessed to be successful. And Mm. this was something I seemed to have success right out there within, you know, the reach of my fingertips. And then it would just elude me. Mm -hmm. And um, so I took some time off is what I did. I took a couple months off and I just really, I, I just thought about things. I didn't do much. I went out to the wine country and I walked a lot in vineyards and I just thought, and I, didn't do anything with respect to trading. Mm -hmm. And then I decided, okay, I'll, I'll go for it one more time and see if I can 
be a different person. I had to bring a different Kim to the trading screen. It wasn't the market. It wasn't my knowledge. It was me. Mm -hmm. And I finally realized that. Uh, I see. Was there, um, was that kind of a gradual process figuring that out or do you remember a specific yeah. trigger? Um, it was, it was actually a gradual, well, I had read a lot and I knew on a, you know, a conscious level that mm -hmm. I was the problem and I just, it was as if I couldn't control myself. See what happens for a lot of people, especially if they've been very successful. I became very wealthy when we took the company that I started public. Mm -hmm. So inside of my, you know, psychology, I had this, this feeling of invincibility. I can do I, whatever I touch will turn to gold. And it's not based in reality because it's not true. Mm -hmm. um, just because you've done it once or you've done it twice doesn't mean you might have to stumble a few times before you can do it again, if you can do it again. And so it was through reading. It was through just talking about life in general mm -hmm. and really kind of what I wanted that I came to the decision that I had to be different if I was going to succeed at this. Yeah. So. Okay, definitely. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Um, if you had to start all over again, is there anything you would do differently or is the process kind of just what it is and you have to go through it? Hmm. You know, that's a, that is a really good question because I thought, would I start over knowing what I know now? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I would. Um, I think that the whole world of Forex brokers and just brokers in general and the overall markets in general, I have don't have a really good, I guess, outlook on them. Mm -hmm. I have somewhat of a, I'm somewhat... I don't want to say sarcastic, but I'm very cautious mm -hmm. and I have a, a lot more, I'm, I'm more hesitant and more conservative than I was maybe several years ago. So I don't know that I would, I don't think, I don't believe in the buy and hold mentality anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I get flat every day. Okay. Um, I don't trust brokers. I've had friends that were in PFG, mm -hmm. which I almost went to work for at one point when I lived in Southern California they tried to recruit me, and they lost their IRAs, their life savings, because they had, you know, $100,000, dollars 30000 dollars in a broker account that went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I see things like that, and I used to have a lot of money in these brokerage accounts, and I won't do that anymore. I take a draw. So I don't know, Hugh, if I would actually start over again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's, that's but it was a good, great question because it made you know it makes me think about would I do this again? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's always interesting to see what people would say with that one. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you talk about getting past some of these hangups that you had, um, and you took some courses. Who are some of your biggest mentors or trading heroes? Yeah, you know, I studied under a guy uh, named John Person. His company's called nationalfutures.com, I think it is. Mm -hmm. And I got to know John on a personal level. And the guy is a phenomenal trader. He came from the, the pits in Chicago. So he was a commodities trader to begin with. Mm -hmm. And he has a house in Chicago still. And he has a house in West Palm Beach, Florida. And I got to know John. And John sort of took me under his wing and taught me the lesson about taking draws out of my account when I made, you know, when I was profitable. So if I started the month out, let's just say at 50 grand, and I made 10 grand in the account mm -hmm. that month, John would say, take 10 out, pay yourself, start over at 50 and see what you can do next month. Mm -hmm. um, John was real sane. He wasn't <laughs> one of these, <laughs> you know, selling you a robot, selling you an EA, selling you the next best you know, conspiracy theory out there, mm -hmm. very professional, and just talked to me more like on a business level, basically, because mm -hmm. he was running a business, he was running, he managed money, he taught traders, he worked with traders, etc. So John Person, the other guy that I've read a lot about, and that I have utmo utmost respect for is Paul Tudor Jones, never worked with him directly. But um, Paul Tudor Jones, I take, um, 
what he says very seriously, which is you have to take small losses in order to be, you know, in order to get the big ones. Mm -hmm. And that's how I trade today. That's, um, that's been my turnaround for me in my trading is taking small losses. Wasn't able to do that before. And then, of course, I love the turtle traders. Mm -hmm. And the reason I love the turtle traders and have read a lot of their books and read, you know, read some of their um, each, you know, there's several turtles that actually have written books. So I've read some of those books. And the thing that sticks out with them is that also taking small losses mm -hmm. um, and then being able to know how to press the gas when you're in a winning position. Mm -hmm. And that's something I can do really well. It just comes naturally to me. So I also like the fact that the turtle traders have said, or Richard Dennis said that, you know, he could post his rules in the New York Times, uh, take out a full page ad, post all of his trading rules and give them out for free and traders wouldn't follow them. Mm -hmm. And that was the reason that most traders, turtle traders either succeeded or didn't was they believed in the rules. They followed them diligently, no matter what their inner beliefs or feelings or emotions were. They did. They traded with integrity, I call it. So it's really those three guys, John Person, Paul Tudor Jones, and then some of the turtle traders. Oh, interesting. Very cool. Yeah, it's, I think one of those guys actually did publish the original turtle rules, right? Yeah, I think Michael Covell. Um, who's written a lot, who has his own site. I think it's called turtletrader.com. <laughs> He's written a lot of books, The Trend Trader and Trend Following. Um, and I've read those books. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, but it all comes down to, do you believe the rules and can you follow it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. And that's, that's, what I, that's where I see even members in my group fall down dramatically. Mm -hmm. I so. see. Well, I've spoken to, I mean, going back to kind of uh, getting to know some of these traders, I've spoken to mm -hmm. some other traders and they kind of, some of them kind of avoid other traders while others kind of gravitate towards them. Uh, where do you fall in that spectrum? Do you have a lot of friends who are actual traders? <laughs> uh, no, not really. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I mean, I have obviously my clients mm -hmm. and I have some people online, mm -hmm. but do I socialize with traders? Not really. And part of the reason is not because I don't want to, mm -hmm. but because I like to do something totally different. When I'm done for the day trading, I'm done for the day. Mm -hmm. I don't want to even talk about it because I like to come fresh um, to the screen the next day or mm -hmm. the next session if I'm trading Asia. Oh, I see. So I don't hang out with them. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's interesting to, to, to always hear what people have to say about that. Yeah. Um, so, but do you think it is important to have some contact with other traders? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm in, well, because I, I'm on Twitter all morning and that's mm -hmm. part of what I do for my members, but also just for anyone who's interested is I'm engaging traders who might be trading the euro or the pound or one of the pairs that I'm trading that morning. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do engage and I encourage my members to interact with me, ask me questions, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very interesting. And a good thing about Twitter is you can just turn it off later on, right? Yes, <laughs> that's right. It's off right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so going back to what you're talking about, uh, taking small losses and kind of um, hitting the gas when uh, the trade is going in your direction, uh, how, how would you describe your style of trading beyond that? Oh, okay. Real simple. Um, I'm, I'm a price action trader. And so what that means, I actually went through this today in my webinar for my group, which, which is really the movement of price. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for certain price levels and I'm looking for certain things to be done at those price levels. So I have a very simple approach, no indicators. I refuse to use indicators. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just candlesticks, 15 minute chart. I don't even look at patterns. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you, followed any of my information or took my trial, um, you would know what I'm talking about and your listeners would know, but it's essentially, I just have key price levels. There's four of them that I use, mm -hmm. like 0, 0, 20, 50, and 80. Mm -hmm. And everything is rotated around three questions that we go through in the morning. I do the same thing repetitive every morning to come up with my trade plan. Simple, but not easy. Mm -hmm. um, by not easy, I mean 
people don't follow it, (laughs) 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 which just astounds me (laughs) still to this day. But it's um, and what's even more interesting and fascinating about what I do and how I do it with Mm -hmm. small losses, for instance, my lowest uh, pip loss is eight pips. So I have a pip range from eight to 12. Mm -hmm. The Euro, the Swiss are at eight and other pairs are at, there's a few at 10 and then the other, the exotic ones are at 12 pips. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no more than 12 pip loss. And my risk to reward is typically at least three to one. Mm -hmm. Um, And most times it's more. And even though I specifically will tell traders in my morning trade planning sessions, okay, if the Euro does this here, we want to execute along if the euro does this here we want to execute a short Mm -hmm. Um, people start to trip up um, after they leave me in the morning and they're out on their own Mm. so but it's very simple Mm -hmm. just not easy yeah that's that's the hard part right actually Mm -hmm. following the plan that's right okay cool um how did you develop this system did you like demo trade it or back test it or did you just put in some money and kind of ran with it yeah, I put money in. Okay. Um, the, I have a really strong opinion on demo trading and back testing. One demo trading, I adhere to and will adhere to it. The reason, the only reason someone should be demo trading is to learn the functionality of their platform. Mm-hmm. So whatever they use, MT4, um, CurrentX, whatever they use, they need to understand the in and out workings of moving stops, putting orders in, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So demo trading is perfect for that. Um, If you demo trade to test a system, I've seen it many times. Traders are brilliant in a demo account and put money behind them and they can't do anything. They Mm -hmm. fall apart because the psychology of losing money wears heavily on them or weighs heavily on them. Backtesting. I have the same feeling about backtesting. I call it like hindsight trading. So you can, it gives you a false context and Mm -hmm. you'll get false results, false security. And then again, you put real money into it and you're like, well, Hey, that was a black swan event. (laughs) Where'd that come from? (laughs) Mm -hmm. So you're not prepared because you think you've got the perfect system figured out. So Mm -hmm. I have really strong opinions on back testing and I, I just think it's false. Like I tell my people all the time, price action traders, you're live in the market. So if I go back, they'll say to me, well, look back a month ago at the euro and can you tell me, was that an aggressive move? And I have to tell them that's hindsight trading. Mm -hmm. I have to be live in front of the screen to tell you the and feel and see the actual price action. Mm -hmm. So if I go back and be a hindsight trader, I'm brilliant. Oh, well, yeah, I would have shorted it there. Really? (laughs) So. Uh, I see. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, everybody has their, uh, different opinions on that and yes. people are very yeah, polarized. I know. So, yes. um, and <laughs> especially are. in your case where you're looking for a feel of the market and it's very much, very much based on the price action. So I could definitely see that. Um, so, so to beginning traders, you would tell them to maybe open a small account and then get educated. And then how else would you suggest that they develop yeah. the system? Well, definitely for new traders, obviously, you you have to go through the demo trading phase just Mm -hmm. to, like I said, make sure you're really comfortable with the functionality of whatever platform or broker you're using. They're all different. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take some time for someone new. It's kind of like you're like a deer in the headlights. I I know it's been 14 years, but I I just know even if I've switched brokers sometimes, I and I have a couple different live brokers, they're different. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so you want to, a new trader is going to want to do some demo trading just to get the feel of the market as to facilitating trades. Um, The other thing is, yeah, put money in um, and really (laughs) trade like you'd trade if you had a million bucks in the account, (laughs) which is really hard to do. Yeah, Yeah. Because what happens is most people, they'll, they'll, it, it kills me and... I'm probably going to sound like one of your most opinionated guests, but they'll open a $500 account, let's say, and then they'll take a $1,500 trading course and spend, you know, 400 bucks a month on a trading room. Mm -hmm. Really? 
okay, you've got 500 bucks to trade with or that you're allotting to trading with. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. So you, what will, what will happen is because they've spent so much on education, it, it far exceeds what they've put in their trading account. What you'll see often, mm -hmm. traders just ratchet that $500 down or whatever it is for them down to nothing, and they have to replenish that account. Mm -hmm. That's one of the hardest things for a beginning trader is to treat that money as if it's a million bucks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Follow the correct um, risk parameters and everything like that, right? That's right. Yeah. Don't be a cowboy or a cowgirl. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Shooting at stuff. <laughs> Shooting at anything. <laughs> that's right. Uh, do you have any uh, profit targets for the week, day, month, or do you just kind of take it as it comes? Um, yeah, be profitable. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I take it. I take it as it comes, and I, I really focus on month end. Mm -hmm. But as far as do I have a goal? Like, do I try to get to five percent or you know eight percent a month? No, mm -hmm. because every what I found is you know, and each person obviously has an opinion on this and what works for them. But it didn't work for me because what would happen is I'd say, okay, this month I'm going to do five percent. So that means I got to do one and a quarter percent per week if I break it down that way. And if I trade four days a week, let's just do easy math, that means I've got to make just under a quarter percent a day. Mm -hmm. And then I would be so focused on making numbers mm -hmm. that I was not trading. So uh -huh. I now trade and then I look. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know what I do at the end of the day because I, I track everything I do. Mm -hmm. But I don't say, oh, okay, um, it's mid-April now, and hey, I'm on, tra I'm on track. <laughs> I can take the rest of the month off. Mm -hmm. Although I have done that when I've had really huge, you know, a huge, let's say, windfall, mm -hmm. if you will. I got lucky. Yeah. Um, sometimes I have taken like the week off, but that's to protect myself from myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, interesting. Yeah, a lot of times when people try to, I, I guess. In the opposite direction, uh, when people say, oh, I need to make a quarter percent this week, they kind of start forcing trades also. So that's kind of dangerous, I guess. That's right. That And that's what I did. I mm -hmm. mean, so that's why it did not work for me. It was more do your job, mm -hmm. trade. And at the end of the month, you'll see you'll see the outcome. Mm -hmm. And kind of judge it based on that. Yeah. And then I but I'm, I'm so diligent with keeping my records that. I know, like today, I had a really good day. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what I do because I take screenshots of my entries almost, you know, within a minute or two. Mm -hmm. Most of the time after I enter a trade, I document that trade visually. It's mainly for my members, and sometimes I throw them out on Twitter mm -hmm. so people can see. But um, I've done that for years, and I'm one of the few people that I know of that actually does that, mm -hmm. that will – because people will take the trade after it's over, and that doesn't tell traders who are learning jack. They want to know, well, why'd you get in there? Mm -hmm. And if you show them a trade that has been working for four hours, let's say, a lot of times they can't understand what you saw at that moment of time of entry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you are following your rules and et cetera, et cetera. So I try to document all that. So I know at the end of the day exactly what I've done. Ah, interesting. So... Yeah, that definitely helps a lot. Um, that's a good segue, I guess, into the next question, which is, do you kind of have a routine every day when you trade? Yeah. Um, I stay I stay focused. I get up a lot. I, um, I take breaks. I uh -huh. take screen breaks because I don't know if you've ever heard of Denise Schull, but she's written Market Mind Games. Mm -hmm. I actually interviewed her on a webinar, and um, I'm really a big – I'm really interested and fascinated by the neuroscience of trading. So one of the things she talks about is getting up a lot. So part of my routine is I get up and walk away. So if I get into a trade, I take my screenshots, my stops are in, I get up, go step out for fresh air, take my dogs out or do something. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come back. So getting up breaks the intense focus that a trader can have by looking at every tick. Um, brings me back with fresh set of eyes so I can see clearly both visually and emotionally mm -hmm. and um, I try to finish by 
11 o'clock or noon California time, our time, mm -hmm. every day, and then go do something else. Oh, very cool. Um, so what else do you like to do besides uh, trading? Let's see. Um, I like to drink fine wines. <laughs> I like to. I, lo I love the wine country. Mm -hmm. um, I love to walk. I love to... Um, I like to be near the water, so I like to go down by the Golden Gate Bridge, down by, you know, Chrissy Field there, mm -hmm. yeah. and walk along and just look and get fresh air and quiet. So I like peace and quiet a lot, mm -hmm. um, and, I like, and I love to read, and I love to go to movies, <laughs> movie buff. Uh -huh. So, and I like to meet with, you know, like, we like to have dinner with, out with friends and do things socially, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. Oh, so it's a good yeah. diversion from uh, from trading. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. In fact, my friends don't even ask. The, my close friends don't even ask. They don't even understand what I do. <laughs> They're like, oh, she trades. Mm, okay, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah. Some <laughs> stocks or something, right? That's right. <laughs> exactly. Um, going back real quick to the, the uh, logging your trades thing. Um, yeah. I get a lot of questions on that. So maybe yeah. you could give us a little bit more on like the uh, what you actually use to create the screenshots where you post them stuff like that just real quick oh sure yeah absolutely I use Jing mm -hmm. you know the, the free thing from techsmith.com mm -hmm. um, it's always open on my main screen and I just right click on that and boom save a shot real quick and I label it you know the date like I'd have four four nine GU mm -hmm. and um, Sometimes I'll actually write. It has a you know a text bar, so I can write a little short note mm -hmm. if I want to put a note on there to tell people what I was thinking um, and why I took the trade. Mm -hmm. And then if I post them out on Twitter, I use Bitly, so I save them in Bitly. Um, that way I can see if people are actually looking at my charts when I post them out on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And um, then I keep them. I have... Uh, a 2000 like each year I have a folder like I have 2014 trades on my desktop mm -hmm. and inside that I have by month and then in the month I have each day trading day of the month already set up so I each month is already set up so all I have to do is go to 49 today and plop in any trades I took into that folder so I have it both in Jing on bitly and then on a folder on my desktop what I do manually by hand though is I have a notebook Mm -hmm. And I just quickly write in the notebook, like I'll say GU, I'll put R for range, because that's that means something to me mm -hmm. as a price action trader. And then I'll put like S for short. And then I put the outcome of that trade right next to it. So if I got stopped out for 10, it would have minus 10 next to that short one. Mm -hmm. And then if I short it again, I, sh I write S2. And I put a check mark next to it. This probably sounds tedious to your guests. I'm sorry, but no, no. it's just a system of. So if I trade one pair two or three times, and I want to document that I screen, you know, I took a screenshot, mm -hmm. um, and I know the outcome, so I can tell you, you know, exactly how many pips I made on each trade, um, and that's that's real important to do. Mm -hmm. um, especially for my members on Wednesday, because in our weekly webinar where I actually teach, I put in all the trades I took, win or lose, so they can ex so they can see exactly my production for the day. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll ask me, you know, if it's non-farm payroll, they'll say, "What did you do on that day?" And so we go over things like that. So they they want to see my trades, mm -hmm. and I want to show them because I'm a trader. So I don't just you know, teach and don't trade. I'm very active. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it goes back to that whole faith thing. If they can see what you're doing, then they have more faith in the system. Yeah, that's right. And if you do, you know, I do what I tell my other traders to do, then, hey, I'm, you know, I feel that that's coming from a place of integrity. And as a CPA, I'm very interested in ethics and keeping with integrity. So um, that just falls into something that's important for me okay very cool thanks for sharing that yeah sometimes people sure. come up with these like really complex ways to uh journal their trades but just a notebook and s1 uh, yep. does it for you so that's great yep uh so i guess there's a topic that's been or has come to my attention a lot lately and that's um some people say that if you if you're teaching how to trade you probably aren't a good trader 
And maybe that's a little bit of a loaded question, but uh, what do you have to say with that? <laughs> I actually agree with that. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there who do teach traders how to trade, mm -hmm. and they don't trade. Mm -hmm. um, they either don't trade or they stink at trading because <laughs> if they did trade, they would have no problem showing you their trades, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That's how I separate myself from the pack because quite honestly, just for your listeners' benefit, I am somewhat cynical on this whole trading education industry, if you will. In mm -hmm. fact, it's one of the reasons that I've thought recently just about walking sometimes because I don't want to be associated with people who don't have integrity. Mm -hmm. And there's most of them who don't. Mm -hmm. So your your question is right on point and it's and it should be asked because I agree with it. Most people who teach trading don't trade. Mm -hmm. Or they trade for crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well um, I appreciate the honest answer definitely. <laughs> And one of the things that um, also, I first off, I don't teach trading per se. I don't mm -hmm. have a course. I don't have, um, I, the only thing I do is I give people a trade plan. So really what I do is you come into a, a go-to webinar in the morning mm -hmm. and three, three mornings a week I say, okay, this is, we have nine pairs we go through and I give you a trade plan for that pair. Mm -hmm. And then I trade that. I trade that plan and you know I do. Mm -hmm. And I charge a very small amount to do that. So my stuff is not necessarily for the beginner trader. It's really someone who's had at least one to two years of experience and is probably someone who's more like five years in and who is just burnt out and has lost a truckload of money. Mm -hmm. And just wants something that works. So that's what I'm about. I don't charge like, you know, hey, come take my online video course for five grand and then I'm going to charge you 300 bucks a month to be in my trade room. No, I don't. I do not do that. And I would never do that. It's mm -hmm. not me. Okay. Very cool. Um, has teaching actually made you a better trader? Yeah. You know, yeah. well, yeah, because I guess... I don't know if it's made me a better trader or a better teacher <laughs> because really if I, I, in fact, today I was just telling people I must be a really bad teacher if some of you are still asking some of the same questions and mm -hmm. I wanted to review some of the fundamentals of price action. And of course, everyone chimed in with, no, we just are dumb or dense <laughs> or thick headed or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever they are. Yeah. Um, but I believe it falls on my shoulders. And so, it's made me a better trader in that I can actually trade more pairs now because I'm I'm very I'm very structured, organized because I have to be every morning when I get on line at five thirty for my members. Mm -hmm. So it makes me better in that I'm much more organized. And I have to produce the accountability because I want to, not because they ask me to, but mm -hmm. if I was them, I would say, hey show me you're telling me what to do show me that you do it yeah. so i do it because i want to give it to them so it's made me a better trader because it's made me much more organized oh i see okay interesting um so i guess you mentioned like there are a lot of uh common mistakes that you see them your uh, students making but uh what are like yeah. what's the most common mistake that you do see um well you know how they say that people learn things in different ways some are visual some are audio mm -hmm. right so i try to say things five different ways and i try to show them five different ways because i realize that someone may not be all there when they're listening <laughs> to me or they may be tuning me out for whatever reason mm -hmm. i try not to take it personally <laughs> but i find that people don't hear me and sometimes i feel like i'm sure your mother has said to you at some point aren't you, you know, don't you listen to me? Aren't you hearing what I've said? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we all have, right? Mm -hmm. Or your dad or whatever. And so I feel like that sometimes with traders. So the common thing is not listening. Mm -hmm. And and the second thing is really um, not doing what we already talked about. I mean, I, I'm kind of, not kind of, I'm very clear without giving a trade recommendation. I say, if price does this, 
I will do that. And if Christ does that, I will do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's up to them to watch for that to unfold or not, and then make an execution decision. So what I find is, like just in this morning, I mean, there were several pairs that did exactly what we always talk about mm -hmm. as price action traders, and they miss it. So it just, um, I see that mistake all the time, or they get out of trades, well, I put my protective stop in, and gosh, it hit my protective stop, I guess next time I need to have it deeper. <laughs> and it's like, well, why'd you do it? You've, you've been saying that for months, and it usually comes from the same people who repeat the same mistakes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the other thing. I see the same people repeating the same mistakes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I guess that, I guess for any education, that's kind of the holy grail, just getting people to do something, right? Yeah. Yeah, to buy into it. Mm -hmm. um, and I also see that people, the same people will jump around from course to course. And then what they do is they have a tendency to start to mesh and they think, they think they're an entrepreneur and they're creating their own trading system. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the biggest fallacies I think I've seen with traders mm -hmm. is that they want to make it their own. I'm sure you've heard that phrase, you know, like, how can you make it your own? And, um, and really, for, for me and what I've learned mm -hmm. is that making it your own is really not being so much an entrepreneur about it or renegade, but it's really finding a set of rules that you actually can believe on and not just pay lip service that you believe because I have a lot of people say yeah 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 oh yeah I believe I believe I believe but when it comes down to actually executing mm -hmm. I know they don't because they fail to execute mm -hmm. so it tells me on a subconscious level whatever's going on I don't know maybe they had a fight with their spouse maybe they don't feel well but they miss the execution mm -hmm. so um, I feel like I'm on, on the soapbox preaching. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really strongly about about all of this. No, so yeah, I know, I know it can tell. be frustrating too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Well, on the flip side then, uh, what's the number one trait in successful traders that you see? They actually do what we talk about. Mm -hmm. And they actually have a plan. So, for instance, I have one guy, he's really good at this. And because I, I tell people trading is, there's two realities at the moment of execution. At the very moment of execution, a trade is 50-50. Mm -hmm. And if you believe that you have an 80% or a 90% win edge, mm -hmm. you're delusional. It is 50-50. So what I tell traders is there's two realities. So let's say price is in a range just for our listeners who are really listening still, mm -hmm. and you, you get an aggressive move into the high of the range. You have two realities. One, it's going to be a breakout, or two, it's a fake out. Mm -hmm. So you can either elect to go long and execute a long, or you can elect to go short. At that moment in time of execution, both are correct at mm -hmm. that very moment in time. Mm -hmm. And I talk to my traders about that's what makes you good not caring about getting a trade that wins, but doing the right thing at the moment of execution. So where I strike and I go short and you go long, we both are right at the very moment. We both did what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones that are exceptional traders. They understand that really there is two realities. And the only way you're going to know the outcome is as time plays out and the charts actually play out and they've come to accept that and they truly believe it. And that's what allows them to execute. Mm -hmm. So they don't start looking at, well, it's a bat on a four hour chart. And the last time price was here was 1981. <laughs> and, uh, I've got a Fibonacci from the year 2000 and, you know, six <laughs> yeah. and they start throwing in everything, but the kitchen sink. And I just, you know, I, then I know mm -hmm. they don't get it. 
Yeah. So they're not going to be exceptional traders. They doubt themselves. They hesitate. They don't. Ta- they're not willing to take a stand, win or lose. And that's what I tell traders: you have to be willing to take the trade, win or lose, mm-hmm. and stop worrying about being right. It's not about being right. It's about doing the right thing, which means executing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. And it's actually more about the exit than the entry, anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. So, okay. So, um, can you? Share maybe uh, one of your how, one of your most successful students, their story, or anything about them. Well, let's see. Um, I have a couple, mm-hmm. and they're both professional people. Okay. So they've both come from professional backgrounds. One's an attorney, mm-hmm. uh, a woman, and another is a gentleman who's a very successful real estate developer. Hmm. Okay. All right. Um, they both do trading now for whatever reason, and they dabble still in, in their professions. But they're like me. They've come from a professional background, but they don't really practice or work in those professions except for maybe ad hoc. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're very willing to, like I said, w- they know the execution. They practice the execution. And the guy is probably he's very good and they both are they they both understand that it's not about being right it's about doing the right thing mm-hmm. and consistently doing the right thing mm-hmm. so you can't say okay well i'm going to do it today but then the next 3 days i don't so they're consistently aware of that of doing the right thing versus being right in their trades mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, i see okay cool um yeah there's a big difference between i guess being happy and being right right yeah that's uh, right. <laughs> or making money and being right, I guess, in this case. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I should have asked this before, but um, why did you start teaching? Why did you start the Price, Price Action Traders Institute? Um, I got frustrated. I got frustrated with, I think I alluded to this, the level of most of the teaching that was going on out there. Mm-hmm. And I had a lot of people come to me and say, please, 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 we're willing to pay you if you ever do this. We want to learn from you. We realize your time, your money, this, that, and the other is valuable, so we'll pay. Mm -hmm. So I decided the model I was going to use was I wasn't really going to teach. I was going to model, actually, model trading. So Mm -hmm. instead of just giving you words and paying lip service to, well, you should have gone long here and you should have gone short here. Can't you see it now? After the fact, hindsight junk. Mm -hmm. I decided I would be an actual model of how to trade, Mm -hmm. um, how to trade price action. And so it was through a series of conversations and people that just were banging down the door And I didn't really want to get into a full-blown trading course, so I thought, this is great. I'll set up the trade plans with them. I'll do them because, quite frankly, I will do them myself anyway for my own trading. Mm -hmm. So why not, you know, venture into this area? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's what kind of got me started was, one, the lack of actual traders who were teachers who actually traded. Mm-hmm. and would show their trades to their group. And then two was, I just had a lot of people asking for me to help them. Mm-hmm. Oh, so very cool. That's kind of what I started or why I started it. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, well, thank you again for taking the time out. I know you, you're sure. pretty busy. So um, maybe a couple more questions. Uh, okay. I know there, there's a term, the trading lifestyle that gets thrown around and it's the name of my podcast because it comes up a lot. Yeah. But, uh, what does that mean to you? That means <laughs> that means limiting the time in front of screens. So that means for me, trading lifestyle is really, hey, I get to look at the markets um, for sure three three mornings a week with my group. Mm-hmm. And if I want to take a Monday or a Friday or both Monday and Friday off, I do. Um, it means having my afternoons free to pursue other interests mm-hmm. um, because I'm pretty much done at 11 or 12, like I mentioned. And it just means... Um, a lot more freedom to pursue other interests, I guess, Mm -hmm. during my time, but still being connected to people and still challenging myself Mm -hmm. uh, personally to teach um, on my Wednesday webinars and to hopefully 
communicate the simplicity of price action trading. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means to me. It, it means freedom. Uh, it means freedom of choice. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much again. Um, where, if people want to find out more about you, uh, where, where are the best places to find you online? Um, well, the best place is I have a website and it's called PriceActionTradersInstitute.com. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also on Twitter at PriceActionKim. Mm -hmm. And my email is PriceActionTradersInstitute at gmail.com. Any of those ways, either on Twitter, email, or through my website. You can also contact me through my website submit a contact form. I'm happy to talk to anyone or email back with you. Um, but that's the best way, one of those three ways. Oh, okay, very cool. So. Very cool. Um, any last words? Um, I, I love what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I have my moments where sometimes I would want to walk away, which <laughs> is very common among traders. So mm -hmm. if anyone's feeling that way, I totally get it. And I'm happy to talk to anyone. And I encourage people to reach out, um, whether it's me or someone else that they feel they can trust. Mm -hmm. If you want to stay in this business, um, you got to reach out and get things together and working for yourself. Otherwise, you will walk away. So good luck. And thank you, Hugh, for having me on. I really appreciate being able to talk to your listeners. And um, I think that's about it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Talk All to you right, soon. Hugh. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast. To listen to all of the other episodes and get free access to Forex trading tools, tutorials, and resources, visit tradingheroes.com.